from the I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see McKinneyCompetitions.com. We're so associated with arts like uh, poetry and uh, acting and singing and dancing. Um, why, Why is it not a cool thing for a boy to do it? With Eilish O'Carroll, who plays Winnie McGugan on Mrs. Brown's Boys. Was she really funny? She was <laughs> one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met. Oh, really? Life. She was unbelievably good and so kind. We didn't really, they didn't really give us a budget for, to help us with clothes or anything like that, where they did do it with other people. Um, so you kind of see from the production elements who, who they want in and who they don't want really? in. Really? Yeah. Just had an instant attraction to each other. Always wanted to be with each other, go for a cup of coffee or tea backstage. Um, and yeah, it's it's really blossomed into something really good. When I get to that stage, that's when I come alive. I love that part of the show, and I you can put me in a dance off any day. It doesn't bother me. Really, you um, don't you don't get nervous. Just, I just find that nerves are a privilege, like or pressure is a privilege. to seeing him gliding across the stage with his partner and either wowing the judges or contesting some nitpicking comment, usually from Brian Redmond, who's actually his friend in real life. But today, professional dancer and choreographer Ryan McShane, who's been on Dancing with the Stars in Ireland since it began in 2017, is our guest. This is your host, Elaine Ingram, and here's Ryan to tell us all about his dancing career from Britain's Got Talent to Dancing with the Stars and his life with his beautiful model girlfriend Thalia and their two dogs, Charlie and Leonard. Hi Ryan, um, I'm Elaine, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm here in your hometown of Lurgan where you're on a, a, a long hiatus from, from dancing. We all know you for um, Dancing with the Stars of course. Um, you've been there since the start, 2017. Um, one of the one of the professionals that everybody wants to dance with but um tell us how lockdown has been or how you know how it's been for you in the last 18 months well yeah lockdown obviously started uh for me when we were in our semi-final kind of um period which then changed on the day to the final because of lockdown coming in um so at the very start probably like most people it was uh it was quite uh thankful for um lockdown because you had this extended break and it was almost like a holiday but 18 months down the line it doesn't feel like that anymore and um, especially for the entertainment business and you know I'm, I'm working with people so it's very hard to teach anyone how to dance um you know when you're not with them however myself and my girlfriend um we did zoom classes um, yeah. to kind of keep everything going um and also to kind of interact with people and kind of uh, we did them for charity um, and uh, yeah, they were great. And you, you had a hundred households kind of tuning in to see you, you know, maybe on a Friday night and we all did some salsa and it was good crack. And, um, you know, you could get dressed up for it and um, yeah, it was good. Um, I'm ready to kind of get back going again yeah. and get my kind of life um, back to, to some sort of normality. I know the entertainment business has been hit so hard, you know, and we're hearing things, especially because you're involved with RTE. So you're involved with the South. So whatever, all the stuff that's going on down there is regards the entertainment. Entertainment gigs, live gigs and things like that have lifted up here with the music industry. But they seem to be much, much slower in, in, in entertainment. Anything that involves, you know, crowds or TV shows like you're involved in. Yeah, like with regards to the TV show um, and Dance with the Stars, like we have a crew and cast of over 100 people. Um, the show can function without an audience however when you put the audience in there you get this extra energy and buzz Um, but yeah the sites do seem slower but somewhat you know they're ahead with the vaccine rollout so it's it's a little bit of a you know is it you know the UK kind of flying ahead you know our Ireland being a little bit more kind of um, cautious about the whole thing but I do feel like um, that we are coming out of this and it's really nice to see music um, 
and festivals and things like happening in the UK. But yeah, yeah. with the with the South, um, I know me going back to teaching. Um, I was teaching kids outside, and it was just raining, and it's just not very. Uh, yeah, and the weather's not going to get much better now. No, no, of course not. Yeah. Um, no, but hopefully. I think the the restrictions are kind of due to lift maybe in in October. Yeah. Um, down south, so that's something to look forward to. And how hard is it for you to keep your own um regime going of you know your fitness levels and things like that, and even your skill level, um when you're not out there professionally. Yeah, it's very difficult, and I'm sure, like everyone else, we've all suffered with you know our mental states. You know, it's very hard to. Um, get motivated to go and uh, train if you don't know if anything's happening. Yeah. Um, and I still don't know if anything's happening. Um, so it, it's very difficult from that point of view and uh, your stimulation, keeping your stimulation kind of high. and Yeah, because you're competitive by nature anyway. Yeah, yeah. competitive by nature. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just very difficult to kind of know what, what to do or when to do it. And... Um, I'm absolutely buzzing to see, you know, people going back to their jobs and, you know, um, life starting to kind of resume yeah. as, as normal. Um, I, I'm probably one of the people that's going to be last to go back. Yeah. Um, which is also very difficult, you know, yeah. because you, you know, I've, I've trained all my life to do this. Um, I actually got a part-time job. Um, oh really? Yeah. About uh, nine months ago. Um, what were you doing? I was working actually in Levi's. Oh, really? Yeah, because my girlfriend was going to kill me if I yeah, if I had been in the house any longer. She was like, so I just went and got a part, <laughs> part-time job, kind of like shower the head a little bit. And um, yeah, it it lasted the, the festive period. And then obviously the second lockdown came in. Yeah. So it was just um, Mr. Boris kind of said, retrain and get new skills. And then um, that happened again. So it was just, yeah, uh, yeah painful. And your girlfriend, yeah, just you mentioned your girlfriend. I was going to get to Talia later on. She's a, a gorgeous model um, yeah. who you met on the first season of um, Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. And back in 2017, yeah. I think so, so yeah. Um, so you were thrown together in lockdown. <laughs> and it's been good for you from what I see from your Instagram and oh, everything else. You both seem to be... This has been a, an amazing kind of like bonding session for us, you know, to um, kind of really understand each other more probably than what we already did before we lived in England as well yeah prior to that so it's not like we're not used to each other or our own surroundings um but you're spending a lot more time together a lot more time <laughs> and thankfully her work is kind of starting to kind of come back as well so that's quite nice and she, she's kind of in the same industry that what I would be in but hers is starting to come back yeah, um, which is lovely to see, and I'm delighted that you know um, she's out kind of doing her thing because the world deserves to see what she can do. And, I know. And I was telling you before is. we started here that I read a, a feature on her, and um, oh, she's she's so st- stunningly beautiful. Yeah, and and, yeah. and I guess that's from an aesthetic point of view, but you know, from an internal point of view, yeah. you know, it, it she she's probably even more beautiful because. Yeah. Um, like even just to do with the, the fact that we've you know uh, rescued two lurchers and uh, she works with the DSPCA and now she's um, an ambassador uh, for um, a food company called Planted which is all to do with vegan food and promoting that um, more sustainable lifestyle yeah well that's brilliant yeah well to, to get back to you and your um, dancing career um, or how did how did it all start? Or when did, I mean, I, I believe you were you've been dancing since you were seven years old. Um, yeah, I think it was even younger than that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, the dance school was just across the road. Um, I think I went to it. And uh, did you go to it under duress, or um, it's just I'm just asking because for a seven year old or even younger than that. Yeah, so I broke my leg and kind of had to re re kind of get myself back going and my mum and dad kind of didn't want me in like a contact sport right. um, so they used that as a kind of a way to kind of get me back going again on my feet I think I sat at the cl- back of the class for the first two months three months but my mum and dad just kept persisting to bring so me so there's along. a lesson in there for some for, for some of us with with, with yeah, kids it's to... the, yeah the persistence um, and then obviously uh, growing up at that stage you know that would have been in the 90s so it wasn't 
it wasn't too great, to, you know, going to school. Do you know what I mean? And and being a dancer. Well, that's know. it for a boy being a dancer. I yeah, mean, did absolutely. You, did you get teased a lot in school? Uh, um, I didn't, but I was hyper aware of it. And um, the reason I probably didn't was because I was very good at football. So right. they couldn't, you know, I could stand on my own two feet, and I was aware of what I was good at, and um, you know. But I was really hyper aware of the fact that I was dancing and um, back then it was completely different. You know, I, I think now to do with like singing and dancing and acting is, is so much more socially accepted yes. with regards to having a stereotype um, added to it. And I think yeah. a lot of parents now... Since actually Billy encourage... Elliot probably changed that. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, on TV shows, um, they, you know, they encourage kids to, you know, not everyone's going to be academic or not everyone's going to be the next Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. You know, and, you know, with regards to Ireland, we're so associated with the arts. I was going to say, don't mention Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're so, we're so associated with arts, yeah. like uh, poetry and uh, acting and singing and dancing. Um, why, why is it not a cool thing for a boy to do it? Yeah. Um, and that, that was my, always my philosophy growing up, you know, like. If but I'm, even when you were young, did you have that philosophy? Yeah, I was very self-driven as a kid. Uh, I'd get my dance shoes. I would go over to the studio. I would practice by myself. I just wanted to be the best. Like, and yeah. I, I think that's maybe um, the thing that kind of was driving me a little bit. Um, and my mum, like, I wanted, I wanted to move away before I went to university, but she was like, "No, the proper Irish mum, like, say you, you're going to go to university." So I went to university on a scholarship um, because I was dancing for Northern Ireland, and I was Northern Ireland champion. Yeah. So um, I did my university and then I left. I left to go to England and I was in England for about 14 years. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, I, that was just me pretty much on, on my own. You know, not mum and dad weren't there anymore. You can't. What age were you when you went over to England? I was probably about 21 yeah. um, when I left here. I tried to get through university as quick as possible because it... I knew it was maybe something to fall back on, but it probably wasn't. What were you doing in university? I did sports science. Sports science. Uh, yeah, so I have a degree in sports science, um, which actually probably helps with the teaching. Yeah. Um, because it was a lot of anatomy and physiology and a lot of psychology. So I can actually take that into what I do. And uh, I use a lot of it to help kids um, yeah. because not every kid learns different. So it's easier if I can break it down in multiple different ways and probably for your own um you know um well-being physically as well it's probably useful to have that because you know if there's something wrong or if you're doing something that's absolutely and and just just general mechanics of the body and how it works and um dance is is very much on the borderline of sport but it's also on the borderline of an art yeah you know and when i was in it was competitive so it was seen more as a sport um, because we'd go to competition and we'd be there all day and yeah. you'd have to battle your way through rounds to get to a final. Um, so, yeah, and, and after that, I, I was lucky enough to dance with a girl who was third in the world and I started to dance with her and I shot up really, really quickly. Like That no, was your dance partner. What, what was her name again? Uh, this this girl was called Rachel Heron okay. and she was from Liverpool and she was she was amazing, like world class. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough to dance with her. They seen something in me. And um, yeah, I shot up through the ranks like bizarrely quickly. It, it normally doesn't happen like that. When did you realise that you had a special talent and you, you, you say you were good at football, but obviously you chose dancing. At some point, you must have decided this was the one sport you were going to go for. Well, prior to me going to university, um, I had won everything on the island of Ireland. And then I was venturing to England. And I think my mum brought me to a British Championships. I'd never been to the competition before. And I went and won it. And normally, you have to be in a packing order. Or yeah. they have to know your, your face... You, your face has to fit kind of thing and I went and won uh, which everyone was shocked at and um, yeah th that's pretty much when I kind of realised that this was probably um, I probably had something 
a little bit more than anyone else. You obviously had this com- competitive edge in you all the time. You know, you say you were competitive by nature mm. and, you know, going through all those dance competitions. And um, what took you uh, on the route of, you know, doing TV shows and um, and that kind of thing? Was it just a natural progression or? Um, not really. Um, it, it all started probably, I did the Royal Variety Show uh, for the Queen Um how did you get chosen for that? Was it just your dancing because was, you'd won so many things? I was, it was because of that. Um, I was British champion at the time. And then I was contacted with uh, from the original cast of Strictly to come along and do uh, the Royal Variety. Um, so I went and did that. Um, and it was Michael Bublé and wow. Lady Gaga. What was that and, like? Yeah, it was amazing. It was, it was really good. And um, obviously got to meet the Queen and stuff afterwards. So, so that was great. And then did she shake your hand? Uh, she did. Uh, yeah, she did. Yeah. So I did that, and then there was a guy from Britain's Got Talent that contacted me and said to me, "Here, listen, would you would you want to come on and would you want to be part of the show?" And I said, "Well, it's kind of being done just two people on a stage. Yeah. So let's see if we can create something maybe a little bit more interesting." And um, kings my, and queens, yeah. Kings and queens, yeah. And my best friend is Neil Jones, who is on Strictly. Okay. Uh, the ginger guy, if you don't know. <laughs> and he was dancing with Katia Jones, um, who is also on Strictly now. And then um, another of one of my best friends, Kai Witherington, who was on Dancing with the Stars, yes. who's now on Strictly. So the group was very strong um, and we went and did that. And uh, You got to the semi-finals, right? We got to the semi-finals. The, the first audition was probably a lot better because... Um, we went and they probably didn't really expect us to be very good. Um, they probably have a pool of people where they want and then they'll have random people that come on uh, and do their gig or whatever. And they, um, we got a stand an ovation straight off the bat from all four judges. And um, they said, they say to us, we're going to have to do that again because we didn't have the cameras rolling. Really? Yeah. So we, <laughs> they, they didn't have any. So it's, it's really formul- formulated in that they kind of know... Yeah, where they're going. they'll know. Like, um, there was another group after us called Light Balance, and they had obviously scouted them. Right. So they. So they, it's not as organic as it looks. It's not. A, well, we know no, it's not organic. It's but not you know organic. What I mean. No, they, they'll they'll you know oh there's a singer on YouTube we'll pick them and there right. there might be a magician. It's not they, just random people. That it's not. Applying. There might be a few random people that kind of make it through. Um, you know, I guess Susan Ball would be a prime example yeah. of probably that. Um, um, but yeah, um, and so we had to do it four or five times um, because they had to get all the camera angles. In a row? That. Yeah, in a row. So been, yeah, we were racked exhausted. after it. Yeah, and we had been there from early morning. Um, and yeah, we got to the semi-final. Um, and it was kind of a, a bit of an unfortunate kind of turn of events because we were dancing the World Championships that uh, two days before right. so it was me um, and Neil and we were on the se- we were dancing world championships and then we were driving through the night to come down to the studios so preparation time wasn't good um, we didn't really they didn't really give us a budget for to help us with clothes or anything like that where they did do it with other people um, so you kind of see from the production element who who they want in and who they don't want really in. yeah um, That's quite but it was quite funny cynical, yeah. isn't it? They, I remember the runner it was after an ad break and um, they kind of thrown us on stage and they were like uh, there's 13 million people watching good luck and oh my God. I still remember the guys you know like the production team still moving the set around as the credits were kind of coming down so no pressure yeah it was just um, it just wasn't it, it didn't I don't feel know right. it just didn't feel right yeah and um, we did we did a good show and stuff like that but um, in terms of getting you know the way they say like you start off right you, you do something you wow the judges on Britain's Got Talent and there and then you have to come up with something even better and even better so I've often wondered this are you holding back and saving a little bit or it's a fine balance because you might not get picked if you don't put out yeah, your best performance. It's strange. But... They, you obviously go into a meeting room with their, they have choreographers or music people and you have to choose music and then it has to be cut together. That That is in with reg- regulations kind of thing. You know, you can't, oh, yeah. 
you know they have to get rights from the music people so it's all a little bit kind of from there a little bit bumpy yeah. I would say and um, they want their own ideas to do with choreography but they're, they're not ballroom and Latin dancers so they don't know what we're going to do right. um, it's an awful lot easier if you have someone come, come in and sing a song yeah do you know what I mean yeah I suppose and that's if they true. sing a song good there and they get through the semi the song that they used at the start will probably be used in in the final anyway. Yeah. So it, it it's definitely an awful lot easier from that point of view. However, a great experience, um, and thoroughly enjoyed it, and we've all done pretty well out of it. Yeah. Um, so it would yeah even like getting to the semi finals is fantastic, obviously, um, but the exposure that you get from that. I mean, you said like what's with thirteen million people watching, but yeah. how many you know executives are watching and how many people from other Absolutely, shows are yeah. watching so we got like asked to do loads of things in the in the middle east um you know like shows and parties and corporate events and you know and we went and did them and we were still competing at the same time um and then other things kind of evolved from that um because the choreography was quite interesting and different from our kind of um kind of world of Strictly yeah. um, and I think that's what Simon Cowell kind of seen in us to begin with what's was, he like in real life he's actually really nice yeah yeah or is you just don't, you don't know his true emotions his face doesn't move too much well, his face probably can't move at this stage <laughs> yeah um, and and uh, who else did we have we had Amanda Amanda Holden was on it uh, Alicia Dixon was on it are they all um, on, on the, when they're on are they on? And then when the camera stops rolling, are they off? Or are no, they just no, chatting away? And no, they're, 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 they're pretty nice. Aunt and Deck are amazing. They're, they're yeah, exactly I, the I, same I, on and off. Right. Um, they're really, really, really nice. Um, so that was a, a, a huge uh, learning curve experience. Yeah. And um, and then obviously I got choreography jobs after that. Uh, I went to the Middle East to do Dance with the Stars. I did a few numbers for them. And I they, at that point I was kind of my competitive career was kind of winding down, but I always wanted to finish on a high. So uh, my last competition, I retired when I won the British professional. The, yeah. yeah. The, the and I retired on the night. Um, because oh, did I, you retire on the night? Yeah, yeah, I retired on the night. And there was a lovely, uh, we had done a, a letter basically saying, you know, thank you. And, you know, to all our coaches and team. Do and, you just know that it's time? Yeah, it it's it a very... Um, emotionally draining process to be a competitive dancer and doing it every year you know the easiest way to compare it is to someone like you know a, a Roger Federer that has Wimbledon US Open yeah. Australian Open we, we have them as well we have the majors and then you have these individual little tournaments that you would that do have to have to keep your ranking up that, that would keep your ranking up that would keep you kind of sharp um, and there's a lot of travel there's a lot of expense and there's no government funded. Well, that's what I was going to say. You don't, I mean, you, un, unlike Roger Federer, a lot of these um, top tennis players, you're not going to get huge, big sponsorship deals. No, you're not. No. So it's, you're basically funding your dancing through teaching. Um, so whether you'd be teaching kids and... Because um, there probably isn't huge prize money in it either. No, uh, it's all, you're you're basically doing it for the, the accolades for the, um, you know, I was a champion yeah here, and or, for the love of it yeah yeah and um I guess the finance part of it or the you know the wealth uh would come after it yeah. you know when you're asked to adjudicate or then you're asked to teach you know the future stars coming up um but like when I moved to England I, I danced for England it was easier for me to dance for England than it was for me to dance for Northern Ireland yeah um, because we didn't have a board here that was even in that league. Yeah, um, I suppose there's not that many to choose from here. Th there's none. Yeah, there's is there none. really? I'm the only, I'm the only person from Ireland that ever won uh, a British title. Wow. So <clears throat> from that from that point, it's kind of um, yeah, you're very much out on your own, and you know you're dealing against a little bit of politics. You know, I'm not English. Yeah. Um, so that's why you just have to be that much better than the people that you're against. And th that was a driving force for me. I kind of like that underdog kind of mentality of I can do this. It does. It's not based on where I'm from or what yeah. I'm about. It's about my talent. And um, yeah, I like that. That, yeah. that. that gets me going. Like, 
So then you decided to, um, when you decided to stop um, competing yourself professionally um, or competitively, um, you you got the gig and um, dancing yeah, well, with the stars. That was like... Well, maybe, that was 2017. But yeah, so that was... other stuff before so, that. Yeah, that I would have been... Um, they asked me about five months prior to me retiring. So I knew that that was going to be my so last you knew comp. You, and you knew you had a gig lined up. And I knew I had a gig lined up. So kind of the timing worked out really well. The only th- the only part was I had already started rehearsals for Dance with the Stars. And then I had to fly to England to compete, retire, and then come back yeah. to Dance with the Stars. Yeah, but when but when that gig came in, it was huge um, for, for me personally because obviously I, I always wanted to... Um, I always wanted to show, showcase my talent yeah. um, and strictly um, in England I had been interviewed for numerous times um, but there it's like anything it's like any job application they're always looking for something so if you're not it then you know you don't worry about it and they have a bigger selection they have a bigger pool, pool and yeah. they can go and you know, so it so is. So your job would be much more precarious, I would imagine, if you were over there. Whereas here, you're probably. I know you say that you have to, you know, wait to be asked back every year, but when you're pretty pretty established. Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I think with anything with these shows is, it's never certainty, and you will. It's never going to be a forever. Yeah. You know, it's very unlikely that someone else will do an Anton de Back. Yeah. And be on the show from day dot until now. Um, now. Obviously, he's now got the judging kind of um, yeah. the the role. So the, these things are always and TV. The TV world is you know you always you're always going to get like a fifteen minutes of fame and and sometimes it does. Feel and especially like with that. shows like that, any sort of reality shows, they all have a shelf life. Absolutely. Although yeah. it strictly seems yeah. to be uh, one of those ones that yeah. could be like the X Factor that people love it. Pe- people love it. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, but obviously when I was asked to be part of the show, I was delighted. Um, something I always wanted to do, and um, yeah, excited to kind of see a different side of, you know. My skill set is is in a little box at that point. So I mean, you're now having to put other skill sets on top of that, or learn how to be interviewed. Um, what are we talking about you know and dealing with that side of it was more of the interesting part the backstage how many cameras I think on the show we have 13 cameras on us at all times so you're you're dealing with that type of um, environment and that was really really interesting um, yeah. because I'm a creative person I want to come up with ideas and I'm going to sh- shove all of the ideas at you it's whether you can make them work or not Yeah. Um, so that that was really interesting and the first season, yeah, as well as dealing with all that stuff, you're also dealing with, do you get to, do you just get thrown your celebrity, you don't know who it is beforehand? Or? Uh, yeah, so we, we do like a meet and greet, um, like a, they call it a little mixer, um, and they, they're kind of figuring out what personalities go together. Uh, what personalities don't go together? Um, See, sometimes they want that. The personalities oh, that don't go together because yeah, it's, it's all um, about um, yeah. ratings. Yeah, uh, yeah, ratings. And adding and, a bit um, of... Um, spice into the mix of course and then um you basically i, I got denise mccormick who was in yes. love hate and um she did a little bit on the east enders and beautiful girl brilliant family very easy to work with and and, and, and you i did brilliantly didn't yeah you? yeah we did good um i think we're the only couple to actually get 90 out of 90 in the final yeah, you got, the, but yeah. we didn't win. You so, didn't win, but I mean, you, 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 yeah, you got perfect, perfect yeah. scores in the final. Yeah. I mean, that was. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. No, it was it was good. Uh, such a such a buzz. My enjoyment is the energy that I get from people. Yeah, uh, when you you're not expecting to do that well, or you know, and um, Denise was very easy, and how I work as a as a teacher is you're as much part of this as I am I'm not coming in to tell you what to do there has to be a creative element from the other person because then it doesn't work and that's how I work with everyone um, and do they have is there do you how do you feel about some contestants now that might have a bit of an edge over other ones whereas they're you know if say an actor I don't know about Denise now I have no idea but um, say an actress uh, would would 
have a background in singing and dancing because she came through that and that kind of thing. And then there's somebody going in there, like, you know, Des Cahill or somebody, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Well, that kind of, that for me is is irrelevant because whether they have a background in singing or dancing doesn't mean that they can do ballroom and Latin. Um, and yeah, but you need to be coordinated a bit. You you do, but the guy who won the first um, season, Aidan O'Mahi, was a GAA player. He never danced in his life. Um, so, and that, you know, and that's why I like the show. And also you need something from a production point of view. Where does the, go, where does the show go to? Yeah. As in, if we put 10 Des Cahills on the show then show's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. So you need a bit of a balance. There needs to be a balance um, and there needs to be room for improvement. And, um, yeah. sorry, That's my lovely. dog. <laughs> What's his name? Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, up. Go to bed. Good boy. Um, so, yeah, from that point of view, it's, um, yeah, it's just really exciting to kind of meet your celebrity and then you kind of get to work and that's where i come in probably more um in ireland it's a little bit different than strictly because strictly actually have choreographers that come in and help them we don't the budget's oh, not really? that big yeah so i didn't know they had choreographers that yeah yeah in. they have choreographies for for m- most if not all of the um, contestants right so if they're coming in they'll bring in a specialist to, to help them with the choreography where in Ireland we don't have that so it's up to yourself of what you bring to the table and how you uh, teach them how you choreograph um, do you design this the the um, the training re- regime like how, how long they have to come in to train for every day or is that is that this, does the show say right you're in for this amount of it's, time it, yeah. uh, the schedule is um, more to do with the celebrity uh, they might still be recording uh, if you're dealing with an actor they, she was at one Red Rock yeah. so on the final she was doing 40 hours in Red Rock and then we would be rehearsing either after it or before that's commitment it. Yeah, it's a big commitment. Um, you might get some people that are still playing sport or you might get um, someone that is um, doing little bits and pieces. So your schedule is based around them, not them around you because I'm employed by the show to yes. be there. Um, so it, it's really dependent on, on your celebrity. Um, the hours is dependent on the person teaching. Um, I believe that I teach quite quickly and... I believe that um, I don't need to be in there for five, six hours. Is that just because you're just a good teacher? (laughs) I I believe that I'm a really good teacher and I believe in my ability to get my message across without hammering it into someone for six, seven hours. Yeah, because you just probably make it worse if if, if 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 they're having trouble or difficulty with something. I suppose the more you hammer it at home, maybe you're just making it worse rather than better absolutely yeah Yeah. and and, you know different people work different ways you'll find that with most sports stars or something they probably need that set regime of it has to be like this all the time you get maybe an actress where you can be a little bit more open you can kind of play with the character a little bit more so with Denise that was very easy Um, with Eilish O'Carroll who plays Winnie McGugan on Mrs. Brown's Boys was she really funny? she was (laughs) one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met in my oh, life. Really? She was unbelievably good and so kind and always available and was up for anything and, and to do with being and, and and that's the beauty of my job is that I get to learn from people like that. You know, dance is as much movement as it is acting. Yeah. And and she can really she could really help me with that. Um so that that would so everybody brings something different. Everyone brings something. You different. You had Conor McGregor's sister as yeah, well. Yeah, I had. And Aaron. she's a she's so she's a um, fitness. She's fitness professional and, um, herself. Yeah, an influencer and um, and very driven and um, very competitive. And you were in the, the you were in the dance off. Um, I've been in three the da- times. I've with been her. in the dance off more than anyone. Yeah. In, in the whole period, that for me, that's when the show starts to heat up, and I like that. Because of maybe my background of going back to when I was a kid and having to fight my way through. Yes. So when I get to that stage, that's when I come alive. I love that part of the show. And I, you can put me in a dance off any day. It doesn't bother me. Really? You, um, don't, you don't get nervous? I just find that nerves are a privilege. Like, 
or pressure is a privilege because I'm being asked to do something in a privileged position. So that's why I've got pressure or nerves. So instead of like feeling afraid of it, like it's better just to embrace that feeling and then use it in a different way or, or you know, when you're releasing the energy, it's just e- easier for me. I, I don't know why. And can you express that to your partner? Can you get that across to them? And this is the funny thing that each partner I've had has been completely different. You know, I guess what the audience sees is what's on screen, but what what's off screen is very probably more interesting if you followed them with a the camera. Like Denise McCormick used to sit in silence, um, just silence she would be sitting on you know one of the big techie boxes yeah and with a bottle of water and she wouldn't say anything um erin had to be constantly talking to me um eilish was very calm um and then i had sinead o'carroll yeah from uh, bewitch yeah, yeah um and she was um she used to tap her hand to like identify a place on her body so you're dealing you're you're also dealing with Just people's emotions yeah. and um different skills that they might have learned in you know their own field you know you've got someone like Sinead who um was obviously from you know or is from very successful girl bands that yeah. traveled the world dealing with probably bigger audiences than what we are going now to do yeah. in front of 200 people in, in a studio in Bray and um, so them little exercises are good because you can take them into your own teaching you know maybe if you have a kid who's nervous and you can say well why don't you try this or well, yeah so you're learning from them as well absolutely it's a it's a huge learning experience and a, a very interesting one and a, a very emotional one as well because i'm emotionally invested in them seven days a week yeah i'm dealing with them being on a high on a sunday night if they get a good st- score or a, completely low on a monday morning if they get a bad one like why am i doing this like I can't do it and you're building them up through the weekend you know so that's where like maybe my emotional side comes in because I'm the one that would normally talk back to the judges yeah probably because they don't see that from a Monday until you know a Sunday they're just seeing the end product um but for me to get it to the end product is a huge emotional journey for them people yeah. And you're dealing with that throughout the cast. Do you know what I mean? It's not just your own partner. Someone else's partner might come and speak to you because maybe they feel that they can talk to you, they can identify with you more than they can with their own partner. Right. Is there is there a lot of competitiveness amongst the professional dancers? Is there any competitiveness or are you just all mates? Do you just talk about for a pint afterwards? Yeah, we go out for a pint. There's no there's no um competitiveness to do with like, oh I wanna beat this person or anything like that. That's certainly how I feel. That's not saying I don't want to win. Of course yeah. I want to win. But that's not about me beating you. That's just about my partner doing as well as she can. Right. So, and is, but is everybody like that? Are there anybody oh, that... No, I think every... I, no, <laughs> who's, I, na- who's nasty? No, no, there's no, there's no nasty ones. Um, yeah, every, everyone's um, great. The whole, the whole group of um, professional dancers are amazing. Yeah. They've been... Um, they, we're all very supportive. We all go through different things at different stages of life and... We have group chats and stuff like that. So no, every everyone's su- supportive. And what about the judges? The judges are great. Um, I'm very good friends with Brian, um, who I normally have words with on the show. I uh, know. Oh, so that's all for that's all for the. No, it's a, no well, like my. my are, you, are you just turn it off when you're finished? Is it like being on a football field? It's exactly like that. Yeah. As in, like if he said something I disagree, my own like true feelings come out at that point. I think that's I'm very thankful because um i think as a nation like we're very honest yeah and um yeah my honesty comes back but i can switch it off as quick as it comes on because so i don't it's not personal yeah it's, it, it, it's your job yeah it's my job and um but i i'm also protecting the person i'm dancing with you know because um four or five months of the that time they're you know i'm looking after their needs if you know yeah, what I mean. yeah um, and the needs of the show i guess yeah um, so it's pretty full on. Um, it's very emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Probably more than what you would see maybe on the TV, you know, because that's, that's condensed. Yeah. 
Get ready to shake up summer with the Get Active ABC Sunshine Fill Programme for kids and families. Get set for land-based adventure at our summer schemes, or why not get adventurous and maybe get wet at our Splashtastic Water Sports Summer Programme. There are so many things to do, and all we need is you. See getactiveabc.com slash summer for all the details. And you met your darling girlfriend. I met my darling girlfriend oh, on it. The first yeah. se- season, yeah. First so that season. must have been. So you had a. It was a win-win thing for you. I know you didn't win, but you came second and you did really well, and you got all those tens. Yeah. And you also got the. Yeah, the I got, girl. Yeah, I got the girl at the end of it. And then, she was actually on the show, but she wasn't your she, partner. She wasn't my partner. She danced with Curtis Pritchard, who was then on Love Island. Um, and uh, yeah, we just got on. Like, you weren't our, worried she was going to run away with the run, Love, Love Island guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I think we've seen how well he did on Love Island. So there was no, there was That's no. Right, yeah, I watched that season. <laughs> um, no, he's a great lad, and um, I know the family really well. And yeah, no, uh, we just had an instant attraction to each other. Always wanted to be with each other, go for a cup of coffee or tea backstage um, and yeah it's it's really blossomed into something really good um, yeah. yeah and we're trying to build our lives together um, which is really good and then I finally did get to dance with her on the tour right. so Dance with the Stars did a tour and uh, we went and won that actually so that was quite nice yeah yeah so um, yeah Sh- we if we go on holiday we will go to a salsa club dance is very much part of our life and did she dance but I know she's a model but no. had she done any dancing before no she'd never danced before so you got her into dancing yeah she loves it um, like coming up to the tour we would go down to the studio here in Lurgan and we would spend hours down there and teaching her and um, yeah she, she really likes it loves it um, yeah it's a huge part of our life oh, that's, I know she got yeah. you into vegan cooking uh, yeah I'm vegetarian yeah All right. so from I think the first week that we started going out, I made a decision I'd go uh, vegetarian. So, so you weren't vegetarian before no, that, no, no, no. So we're, she's vegan, I'm vegetarian. All right, um, and you haven't looked back. No, no, it's grand. Do you find that good for? Um, do you find that makes a difference with, you, with your dancing? Um, does it make any? Like, I, I actually don't know. You know, you don't know, I don't. I don't know if it has any. You just benefits. feels healthier. Yeah, kind of like a moral, it's kind a moral, of yeah. moral kind of thing as well. Especially, obviously, if we're rescuing you know our dogs that you know that have been abused yeah. and you know then i'm gonna go and do that i guess more my moral compass probably what are the dogs names again charlie and leonard oh th- so this and is leonard. charlie and yeah that's and leonard, that's over leonard, yeah. leonard is over on the other couch lying there having a nap he's having a nap uh, what yeah. are they what what did you say breed they were so again? they're lurchers yeah. lurchers lurchers yeah a mix between kind looking. of a uh, greyhound and um, yeah, Saluki. they're very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and they don't bark, and um, twenty minutes run, and, and then they'll be lazy. sleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll be sleeping fourteen, fifteen hours a day. Yeah. Um, what yeah. Uh, What is your What's your favorite dance to do on the show? My favorite dance is Pasadoble. The Pasadoble, yes, the famous Pasadoble, famous, famous Pasadoble. <laughs> And the reason being is because I went to Spain um, to a little village called Mijas. And I spent a week with um, a group of matadors learning about the culture, uh, learning about... Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, super well, interesting. Well, it's interesting because you're, we're just been talking about vegans and about yeah. um, the moral yeah. dilemma and seeing as you're talking about matadors and that's a very contentious one in terms of um, Absolutely, cruelty. Yeah. Um, and this was prior to me being vegetarian. Um, not that that probably would have mattered, but I guess after me seeing what the experience was like um i was going from a movement point of view to talk to the matadors to to see how they move the cape to see the, how they stand what why do they do it um some things are to do with like a religious belief um so it was more to do with the history and and why yeah um we actually did go to a bullfight at the end which was absolutely horrific <laughs> Yeah. Um, they, yeah. It just wasn't. wasn't did they, did very they kill nice. the bull at the end? They did. Yeah. yeah. They. Yeah. They. They killed uh, three or four of them. 
Um, I, so, yeah. I don't know how the ice in my head, I can't justify it. No, uh, you know, and after watching it, I just was, you know, um, the beauty of the of the dance and the 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 relationship between the matador and the Spanish flamenco dancer, which would, would be the girl, yeah. the lady. Um, yeah, that that's why I went, um, yeah. which was just so interesting, uh, especially to see different culture and how they deal with that. Um, so that's why I went. <laughs> but uh, and the yeah. pas- so the pasadoba is your favorite dance. That's dance my too. yeah. That's my favorite dance. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of the, the other ones are good as well. And they what's all... the hardest to teach, or or is it just depend on who you're? Hardest teaching? to teach is probably samba, uh, Brazilian dance. Uh, it's just very difficult with the ri- rhythm technique. Um, yeah, and a lot of people just don't can't grasp why how. I yeah. guess if you've done it from a child, then it's it's okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're, kind of like asking someone to go and play a piano on live tv if they've never played piano before it's, yeah. you know um so yeah that that would be my favorite and and sam is the hardest to kind of teach but they're all they're all great and they probably all have their own different qualities right? absolutely and yeah some people are probably good at one and just can't absolutely pick yeah. up another yeah yeah just and they, the they could pr- probably be very similar but they just can't get the grasp of it or they don't understand it and um you're the with dance and the dance that i do it is all to do with human behavior yeah but the more you teach you more that you understand people don't understand human behavior right for example like if i'm teaching you know young kids and stuff like that especially boys um just to do with like even opening a door for a lady or opening a door for anyone my generation my dad would have taught me that yeah um where that they're like what I'd normally just walk through the door <laughs> and you're like, okay, so now you're kind of, you know, and especially when you're dancing with a partner, mm-hmm. whether that be male or female or whatever, there is still a mechanics that works with two people and, and there has to be human gestures towards them. So um, that's, that's the hardest thing to teach, you know, um, probably harder in a younger generation then, as you say, you know, yeah, it's, harder, yeah. it's funny because, it, you know, I would teach my, boys who are older you know to give a somebody elderly a seat on the bus or to open the door for a girl absolutely but if i said to my 13 year old daughter would you like a boy to answer she she would be the one to say i can walk through a door by myself i don't need a boy to open the door for me and and you know what these are just all kind of um you know things that we i guess we've just kind of i've kind of grown up because my dad my dad would have said you know if your mom you know open the door for your mom or you know just simple little things like that that's not to say that today's youth is wrong that's just to say it was it's different. It's different, yeah, 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 different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just brought up differently. Yeah. So, um, so hopefully the the um, the next the things are going to be lifting soon. But they there there is they are planning a show for twenty twenty two, right? For they are planning a show. Um, whether it goes through or not is debatable. I I don't know. I haven't heard. I've heard obviously in the media and stuff. Yeah. But no confirmation as of yet to what's happening um i think it's just difficult just to do with tv and especially to do with rt because obviously you're dealing with a tv station which has a smaller budget than strictly yeah and strictly they can put them into an isolated bubble um with rt i don't think that they're going to isolate people and say okay well you can't go and do that job but you have to do this job the whole time yeah um and I, th- th- but that must be quite difficult for you then that you don't have that stability of knowing i suppose you're just going to get back to your teaching and just yeah. if that if that if that if it happens it happens is that the attitude yeah i want to get teaching um like maybe some start start some stuff up here in northern ireland i do a lot of my teaching in dublin or i fly to england and teach in england right. um maybe start something up here um I guess with with the style of dance that we do is a little bit not old fashioned because a lot of this stuff is not old fashioned, but a lot of people might see it as old fashioned, like oh, ballroom and Latin. Ballroom and Latin. Yeah, yeah, ballroom and Latin. You know, where kids maybe want to do hip hop or you yeah. know things like that. Um, you wouldn't think of expanding to that, no? Because well, I ha- can I, I, I can I can teach that as well, but that's not my love. That's not yeah. you know like. Uh, my profession my profession is boredom and latin yeah yeah um but things will be back to normal and we can get 
kicking again just to see what the what the story is with the show I hope that the show does come back I feel like um, Irish audiences need the show yeah. like you know there's only so much um, home improvement that you can watch That's or <laughs> uh, cooking shows or, or repeats yeah, of and I Starsky think, and Hutch yeah and uh, <laughs> I just think that like Dancing with the Stars or Strictly gives people just one it's got the music element anyway so you know if you're dealing with a singing show you have that then obviously you've got the dancing and then you get to see the kind of personalities and their personalities it. that are doing something out of their what they're normally expected to do and you're seeing getting a, a like a little bit of an insight yeah of course. and there's not too many family shows that you can sit down and watch with the whole with family everyone. yeah no. yeah because um, there's nothing offensive or there's nothing no. and it's great like especially like when we do like movie week or something like that and then you have like Disney movies and stuff and the amount of kids that are watching it with parents or grandparents or um, it's great that the actually effect that it has on them people and especially if you're out if I'm out walking about in Dublin and I get stopped and stuff. Do you get stopped a lot? Yeah I get stopped quite a lot um, in the south um, and, and the people just want to talk to you about, about the show and I, I think that's a huge thing to do with you know the effect that it has on families especially yeah. on a Sunday night you know people are not going out because it's not Saturday night they're probably in yeah, in, yeah. in the house and you know it's during them one, prime time yeah, TV, yeah. One, once them winter months come in especially January February you know it's really nice for a family to sit down and watch the show and have a laugh and get to be the judge and I like this person or I don't like that person yeah um, yeah and it's really good um, so I, I feel like they need it they need it coming back yeah yeah um, and you know the thing about it is it's like oh yeah but it you know Colin Farrell's not on it you don't need Colin Farrell <laughs> no you it. don't you know and oh there's no celebrities left in, in in Ireland you know that's what you hear a lot there's a lot of these internet influencers that have thousands and thousands yeah. of people following them you know and you'll see that with Strictly now where they're bringing YouTubers on and the dimension of a celebrity is is completely different than what it was when yeah it so they even have celebrity uh, youtubers and all this new film um free guy yeah, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So and these guys are huge these, yeah, like they they're huge. bringing millions and millions of people in to watch them every week yeah um so um hopefully it does come back yeah and hopefully i get another shot at the glitter ball yeah what's it feel like getting a perfect town it feels um i'm more uh, I'm more electric for the person that I'm dancing with. Yeah. Because you can feel a 10 on a Wednesday before. You can feel it happening. Really? Do yeah. you know? You, is you it just, just know, something that's going to click? You just know that there's like... I remember I did tango with um, Denise. And I think it was like week three. And it was to Roxanne. And I remember picking the clothes. I, I remember picking the stage. I, I remember doing the graphics. And and just thinking this is gonna this is gonna work, you know yeah. this is a hundred percent gonna work. Yeah. And I remember doing it, and just the the place was just it was like someone put a bomb off. You're just electric, yeah. um, and you can feel that energy, and you can also feel a silence when people are watching it. When people are engrossed in something that they don't really show very much emotion until it's over, and you feel that energy in the in the room. And, yeah. and the more I give as a performer, the more energy I will see, receive backwards, and that's the that's what I love. It's not necessary a number at the end, yeah. Um, because I've done other numbers that probably had the same feeling, but just didn't get the the results, you know. Yeah. Um, but you just know it's just that you feeling. know you know like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of that week, or in rehearsal room by yourself, um, you'll know it's going to happen or not happen. Yeah. Or you'll know that you're pretty close. Have you ever had any disasters where anybody's fallen or anything like that? No, I've never had any disasters. Not really. I tripped on the very first dance on the very first show. And the floor was very slippy. And I actually tripped, but I didn't fall over or anything. And Did anybody uh, notice? Was yeah, it? yeah, they noticed. <laughs> they kind of got on me about that a little bit. But that's just a little bit of banter. Yeah. Um, but no, no disasters, really. Um... There, there'll, there'll always be you're going on to national television with someone that you don't know how how they're going to react are they going to remember what they're doing do you know what I mean how do you fix it quickly 
if they forget it. Um, you know, there's so many like little equations that could come into play that you just don't know. Yeah, would you have any little um things where you tell them right if there's something happens I'm going to do this to yeah know. absolutely like just e- even simple things um to you get know. you back on track yeah especially like you dealing with like just simple things to me but like you know a lot of people can't count music right so if you can't count music you can't dance on time to music yeah so like even just like me pulsing my hand on their hand is giving them a rhythm oh, okay right so are you not listening to the music you're you're just listening to the beat well i'm listening to the music because it, the music is telling me where the choreography is going to go yeah they're they're following me hopefully yeah and that's something that you don't know whether or not they're going to do or not or trust you enough God, to i'd do. be so bad at that show yeah well a lot of people a lot of people you know i don't know especially if you get up in a bar and you dance either the lady just completely takes control or they will follow a little bit or you so you're dealing with human behavior you're dealing yeah, with yeah yeah you said that earlier yeah, yeah it's true yeah you know are you going to trust me enough to put you like to lead you around this floor to make sure that you're safe and that you feel comfortable and i'm not going to put you in a stupid position that you do something wrong so i'm very much looking after their needs yeah at that point and like covering them in cotton wool even yeah. though there's 13 cameras and makeup and hair and everyone yeah. annoying you you just want them focusing on you and me yeah. and you know the story that we're telling and yeah there's so many elements that can go wrong but when you get them right then it's rewarded i guess yeah yeah no it's good, it's good. is there anything else you'd do if, if you weren't a dancer is there any oh that's t- I, no one's ever really asked me that before i never really thought about it right um, I probably always just wanted to be um, performing or I'd love to do an, I would love to be an actor yeah um, it's all know. in the entertainment field. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I would love to go into like production right. I would love to help people choreograph produce um, yeah I'd love to do that yeah. Northern Ireland's very small for it though yeah it's very hard to kind of get into that element of i suppose that's true but then again it, it might be small for it but then there's there aren't that many people that are you're not competing against as many people either no so. and I, I guess the, the the whole thing with like brexit at the minute is the fact that netflix are now using ireland as a hub right. to do a lot of movies to do a lot of yeah. tv programs because they can't film in the uk anymore yeah. So um, is that really coming to fruition? Now? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, um, I know with Dancing with the Stars, if it is to happen, we are not back in the same studio that we were because Netflix took it over for five years. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's already bought out. Um, oh. Yeah, so but then that opens up a, an awful lot of opportunities for young Irish talent to you know make strides in different directions, whether it be behind the camera or in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, and and. I find that very interesting, you know. Yeah. So you're staying, you're staying put, you're staying at home. I'm saying, uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I, well, Talia, uh, she just has, she got signed by IMG. Uh, which fantastic, is, yeah. Which is one of the biggest agencies in the world. So she's going to New York. Um, I will probably follow, um, whether it be from a teaching point of view, I can go over to um, New York. So you can take your skills anywhere you want. That's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, and know, especially like... any kind of metropolitan city um, has dancing in it. Yeah. Um, you know, when you go to, you know, Northern Ireland, not so much, you know. Yeah. Um, but definitely New York. Like I know about 10 studios that are, te- you know, I could go and teach, um, which is good. And that opens up possibilities as well. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm staying put. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. We're very happy here. Um, we moved up here two years ago. Um, we were living down south, but it was just so expensive. Dublin. Dublin is just ridiculous. Ludicrous. Ludicrous prices. Yeah. Um, and standard of life, like you know, you can't. I don't know anyone. You can't afford the rent. The rents in Dublin. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's just stupid. So we're very happy here. We're down the road. We can get the train. Um, you know, it's only down the road as yeah. well. Yeah, it really. Yeah, is. when I when I do the show, I travel every day from here. Yeah, I mean the train's an hour's journey. Yeah, yeah, and it's down the road. I get on the train, get off, go to the studio, come back. 
Yeah. And you're in your bed at night time, so it's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, it's been lovely talking to you, Ryan. And you, thanks very much. Thank for you the, very much. Your time. And good luck. I hope the show goes ahead. So do I. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll looking forward to it and, and interested to see who you get this time. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed listening to Ryan there telling us all about what it's really like behind the scenes um, on Dancing with the Stars and uh, what the celebrities that he's worked with are are like. And hopefully it'll be back on our screens um, to brighten up our winter nights. And whatever Ryan and Thalia um, do in their future, I wish them all the best. Remember to keep getting all of your news from Arma Eye and I hope you join us next time for our podcast. From the... I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the... I can't it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see mckinneycompetitions.com.